Ultralight Backpacking and Survival Tips with Steve Gilman. There are three common types of backpacks and the external frame is the one that many people are familiar with. That's one of the oldest designs. That's the frame on the outside of the pack. The internal frame sometimes a little better for stability, a little bit hotter on your back also. But for ultralight backpacking, you're probably going to be looking for the third type, which is the frameless backpack. My own here is a Golite Breeze. I'm not advertising for them. don't think they even sell it anymore, but it's 13 ounces and it does everything I need. And I've taken it to the top of a 20,700 foot mountain and in rainforest and every place else. And one of the things you're going to do if you have a frameless pack is use something like your sleeping pad. For, uh, for support on the back. It's somewhat of an internal frame of sorts then. And for a sleeping pad, here's a little extra tip for you. You can take a regular blue sleeping pad and score it with a razor on this side and then the other and make an accordion so you can fold it up to put it in there. Now, this pack is very basic and because it's mostly one large compartment and just a few outside pockets, it isn't quite as convenient. You're gonna give up some convenience to have the lightness instead of having you know 14 different pockets. But on the other hand, a uh, full exterior frame pack can weigh five, six pounds. My first one weighed five and a half pounds. This is 13 ounces. So you're cutting a lot of weight off right here with a frameless pack. There's nothing written in stone about any of these rules, by the way. Uh, some people just aren't ever going to get their weight down as light as I travel, for example. And if you have a little more weight, you might actually want a frame on your pack. This is the lightest way to go if you really want to get that weight down. But there are some internal frame packs now that are getting as light as two to three pounds. And that still cuts quite a bit of weight off compared to the conventional packs. So you go with what works best for you. But this one has done well by me for years, in all sorts of conditions, too. I'm going to show you what I use for a simple seat when I'm on either just a day hike or on a weekend trip. I take a, a sleeping pad, actually I did this years ago and it's still here, and cut a piece out about this size. That weighs about one ounce. This is just a quarter inch sleeping pad. It'll keep you dry if there's a wet log you want to sit down on. It'll insulate you from the ground if you're sitting on that or from a cold rock. So it'll give you a warm place to sit anywhere you go for the cost of an ounce of weight in your pack. And if you have it cut to the size of your backpack, it'll also provide padding on your back and some support, like an internal frame of sorts. All that for an ounce. If you uh, are in a survival situation or just a little crisis when you're backpacking and you need something to tie things together one of the better substitutes for a string is spruce roots from the spruce tree and you can usually find them by scraping near the base of the tree the grounds really loose here so this is a good place for it just take any old stick if you have it and uh, dig until you start to see roots and then pull them loose, keeping them as long as you can. Spruce roots, you can see, are extremely flexible. They can be tied in a knot without breaking. So I'm going to dig some more spruce roots, and then I'm going to show you just how strong these really are. I spent about five minutes gathering up roots. And you can see they come in different sizes. Some thick ones here that I just wove together. It took about a minute to weave three pieces around and I'll tell you I can't break that. I think it would hold a hundred pounds easily. If I had a place to hang from I'd see if it could hold my own weight because it feels like it could. So you can see they're very flexible and very strong. Smaller ones like these can be tied into knots. So if you were making a lean-to for example, there's one already tied I'll show you. If you can find the longer pieces like that, you can use it to tie 
the uh, sticks together if they need them. Sometimes you don't really need to tie them if there are enough sticks to catch them, but that'll keep it on there solidly. And then you could tie more on there. You could use it for a replacement of shoelaces. You strip them down a little cleaner and take the bark off of them and they actually uh, become more flexible. And you could tie your shoes together if your laces had broken, for example, and you're having problems. Uh, you could use them to tie your food up in a tree if you had to do that uh, at night. So there are lots of uses for uh, spruce roots. And they're not too difficult to dig if you find any spruce, spruce trees around. Very strong, very pliable, and a great uh, survival skill to have to know how to find these and use them. Get big down so you find the roots and break off probably longer pieces than this most of the time, but this would be handy for tying things together. You can see you can tie that right in a knot without it breaking, unlike a lot of grasses and vines which tend to crack when you tie them. A spruce root is very flexible and also very strong. They were used for uh, weaving together uh, birch bark for birch bark canoes in the east, for example. So that's a little trick to remember if you need something, maybe, maybe to replace your shoelaces even. You can use spruce roots. You can also weave them into uh, various things. You can make a bracelet or a necklace if you're feeling artistic, but for survival purposes, they're just great because they're strong and flexible. You might just be an ultralight backpacker if you use dieter's tea and laxatives in the days before a trip just to save a little bit of weight. Lose two pounds in 24 hours, or four pounds if you're really full of. Thank you for watching Ultralight Backpacking and Survival Tips with Steve Gilman. For more information, you can see the ultralightsite.com, the ultralightbackpackingsite.com, or buy the book Ultralight Backpacking Secrets, now available on Kindle and Nook.